Hi guys and welcome back to Rich Reviews. So if you've been watching my series on my 1997 Porsche Carrera 993S, you would have followed the introduction um, and the subsequent videos that will be progressing and that we'll be delivering out on the 993. So there's going to be a lot of footage. So let's take a little second for you to subscribe now. Come on, you know you want to. So guys, please subscribe. If you're watching the channel, and if you want to see more content on my beautiful 1997 993S, the one of only 255 in the world, right hand drives please subscribe if i get interested in this series then i will create an awful lot of footage just detailing all my ownership of the 993s so today this is uh, this is i believe this is third in the series for my porsche 1997 903s so today we're going to talk about the paintwork the effort that's been put into the paintwork to get it to this sort of standard and if you just look at the vehicle on the front of the car you can see the mirror reflection this is metallic black paintwork and this reflection and this standard of paintwork doesn't just happen. It isn't standard delivery for Porsche. And this is a 22 year old car. So this sort of, this sort of quality of paintwork has to be worked out to get to this sort of standard and to keep it at this standard as well. Again, if you've been watching my series, you would have seen that this is a garage queen and this isn't used on a daily basis. The car would not look like this if you use it on a daily basis. That's just fact. You just cannot, you cannot get a car to remain at this sort of quality of standard by using it on a daily basis in the winter, in the rain, etc. This is never used in the winter and rain. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how this paintwork came about to be at this standard and the sort of work you've got to put in to keep the paintwork at this standard. So I, I bought the car in 2008 and the paintwork was in good, fairly good condition um, for, the, for the year. Obviously I wouldn't have bought it if it wasn't in good condition, but there were um, a few little stone chips on the car. The most amount of mileage I've ever put on this car in the first year. Now I bought the car in 2008 and in total ownership of the car I've only put eight and a half thousand miles on this car since 2008 so that's in 12 years of ownership I've only put 8,000 miles on this car and most of those mileage was in the first two years of ownership um, as I progressed the car and got it to this level of standard or started moving it to this level of standard then I started to reduce the mileage never was driven in the winter and the, and the rain anyway and I started to care more for the car and uh, reduce the mileage and obviously went on to an agreed value insurance. So I'm just going to walk you around the car and see if you if you look around the car, the sort of standard of the of the paintwork. So in 2008, as part of the reimagination of this car, when I say reimagination, I decided that the car didn't look as I wanted it to. And I wanted to get to the car to the look 
the feel and the standard that I wanted it to be. So I decided that I would invest in the car. I'd already invested in the car in purchasing it and obviously the maintenance, etc., on an annual basis, but I decided to really invest in the car. Now in 2008, as part of my reimagination re project, I decided that um, on the tail end of all the mechanical work up upgrades and changes and, um, and uh, maintenance, so things on the suspension and such like, I'll, there'll be another video that'll talk about that. I decided that I wanted the paintwork corrected. The paintwork was in fairly good condition anyway, um, but then I had to research who I wanted to do the detailing on the vehicle. Now, the proper detailing takes into account multi-stage detailing, multi-stage color correction. That is an awful lot of work. And to do it properly, you've got to factor in the time, effort, and the money. Now, the key thing, as, as with everything, is you have to understand what your criteria is, what your standards are, what level of standard you want the paintwork to end up at, and that drives how much you're going to spend on getting the paintwork to that level of standard and who you're going to use. So first of all, I decided I wanted the car to pretty much be in the condition that it, it arrived out of the Porsche factory, and I decided that I would do whatever it took to get it to that standard. So that meant that I had to research extensively the detailers that are around in the marketplace at the moment to be able to get the paintwork to the standard that I wanted and to be able to be sure that I was going to get that quality of, of delivery of paintwork. Okay, so I did a research in the marketplace, speaking to many detailers, and um, I ended up getting a recommendation to a particular detailer. And I had many, many conversations with this detailer. And I've got absolutely no concerns in mentioning his name and mentioning his company. He did an absolutely awesome job on my car. His name is Ted Whitehall and he runs the company, the devil is in the detail. So I've got no concerns at all at advertising Ted, exemplary work. When I looked at the car when it was delivered, it was a mirror finish. Um, you'll see from the video that we're dropping in here, you'll see the collection video that I took when I actually picked up the car from Ted and just exceptional quality. He took loads of pictures, loads of videos of the car as he did the detailing, he had the car for two weeks. The level of standard that I asked him to deliver the car to, he far surpassed that. When I looked at the car when it was delivered, it was a mirror finish and Ted just couldn't be a better service. Fantastic guy, really, really nice guy, incredible hard worker, very tenacious. So I drove the car up to Ted Whitehall, um, which is the, the, the largest mileage I put on that car that year. I drove the car up to Ted. We'd had multiple discussions on the phone, multiple discussions on texts and emails beforehand so that I had confidence that Ted was the right person to do the work on the car. And I drove the car up to Ted um, and then Ted had the car for two weeks. I had multiple photos from Ted during the two week period um, so that I could see the quality of the, of the finish that was being prepared and so I had full detail of um, the work that he was performing. Now, what Ted did um, was again exemplary work. So obviously Ted did his paint checks on the car to understand the thickness of the paint. So in effect, understanding with this car, because it's got a clear coat on it, to understand the thickness of the clear coat um, how many microns thick the clear coat was so he knew exactly how much thickness he had to deal with when he was doing his paint correction that is vitally important every detailer should make that as a minimum part of their checks that they perform on on the car before they even think about doing any work on the car so ted did his checks and then he worked on first of all removing any any small amount of stone chips that they were in the front of the car and now typically what they do is they work on that area first of all because that takes a long time um, and they work on the rest of the car while they're preparing the stone chips. Okay, so what does preparing the stone chips mean? That means that they have to rub down the individual sections where the stone chips are, which is minute areas, as I'm sure you can appreciate. And then they slowly layer layers of paint in there to build up the layers over a period of time. You can't just put one big dollop of paint in there. You put one big dollop of paint in it, it'll never dry. As soon as you touch it with any cutting compound, then it'll be too soft and it'll just be pulled out the stone chip. So first of all, you have to, you have to put the paint in after you've cleaned the, the stone chip area, then you have to put layers and layers of thin layers of paint in there to be able to build up the depth. Um, ready for final preparation and then you've slightly overfilled the the stone chip so you've got enough depth there to play with when you actually finish off the paintwork to, to bring it back so Ted did that and he went around all of the car resolved all the stone chips on the car and then most of the panels which may seem quite horrifying believe you me it was quite horrifying for me um, w when I saw the pictures um, obviously I knew Ted was going to do this he let me know beforehand 
but he rubbed down most of the panels with sandpaper so he flat sanded most of the panels to take out the imperfections now obviously there was the depth in the clear coat to be able to do that to facilitate that and the the coarseness of the sandpaper that Ted was using was very very fine these guys know what they're doing Ted has an exceptional level of experience in performing this and the amount of cars and the the value of the cars that Ted has going through his garage is far outweighs the value of my car. So following Ted having flat sanded any panels that he needed to flat sand. So as you can imagine on here, you've got to be very careful. You've got curved surfaces, but as again, Ted knows what he's doing. I don't know the full process in, in that they perform, but um, as quite a technical person, obviously I understand they flat sand and they take the paper down to reduce levels of coarseness to be able to in effect, get it to the stage when they can start using a cutting compound. And then, the, and then what Ted did was he used multi different levels of cutting compound on the car multi multi stage correction across the whole car to bring it to this standard of finish again this was done in 2018 this work and we're now 2020 and the finish is still exactly the same now why is the finish still exactly the same well because as soon as the car was finished deep being detailed i'd arranged for a company in derby close trailer very important you don't want any stone ships coming from the trailer flicking up to the car if it isn't fully covered in when it's in the trailer so it's collected by the company and it was taken up to have full ppf paint protection put on the car that is everywhere where the paint protection is and we'll take a walk around the car and then explain to you where the paint protection is fitted now the paint protection that was used was the leading industry standard at the moment obviously it changes as technology progresses um, so the, the film that was used on this car is called SunTech Ultra. You can get just SunTech without the Ultra. There's mainly two versions of the film. In effect, the Ultra gives you slight better protection and it helps wick water away. 